Good morning. Today's lesson is 2.8. Today we are going to multiply using mental math. Our essential question, how can you use mental math and properties to help you multiply numbers? Let's unlock the problem. Properties of multiplication can make multiplication easier. There are four sections of seats in the Playhouse Theater. Each section has seven groups of seats. Each group has 25 seats. How many seats are there in the theater? So I'm gonna to look to see what I need to find. Well, I know that there are four sections of seats, and I know that each section has seven groups of seats, and that each group has 25 seats. So if I multiply the four times the seven times the 25, I should be able to find out how many seats there are. So I can use the commutative property. So think about it. Four times 25 equals 100. So that's kind of an easy one, right? So instead of writing four times seven times 25, I'm going to move this over and I'm going to do four times 25 times the seven because I can mental math do this as 100. So if I know that this is going to be 100, so let me erase that so you know this is 100. I can easily do 100 times 7. 100 times 7, that's easy. 7 times 1 is 7, and I add my two zeros. So there's 700 seats in theaters. So remember, with multiplication, 4 times 7 is the same thing as 7 times 4, right? It works the same way for addition. 4 plus 3 is the same thing as 3 plus 4. Now, that does not work for division and, and subtraction, but the commutative property does work for multiplication um, and for addition. So why not move the numbers around so that you can do mental math with the easier numbers? All right, so in the next one, I have 6 times 10 times 10. Well, if I use the associative property, I can just take my parentheses. I kind of want to show you one here. I'm going to use it like this. I know they, they've kind of written it out here like this, but it looks a little confusing. So the associative property just means I'm going to take these parentheses and I'm going to move them over because, again, to do mental math, it's easier to do like numbers. So if I had my parentheses here instead and I did 10 times 10 first, that would be so much easier for me to know because um, I do that in my head. I know that 10 times 10 is a is 100, right? So now... I've got 100 over here, this is what was in the parentheses, and I still have my six, and now I do six times 100. Well, six times one is six, add my two zeros on there, and it's 600. So it makes it a lot easier, because if I had to do six times 10, that would be 60, and then I have to do 60 times 10. So this just makes it a little easier to, um, to multiply if you put the numbers together that are easier. So again, I'm, um, I've got commutative property and associative property here. So on, for instance, on this one, I have 4 times 9 times 250. So commutative property would just switch them around. My associative property, however, would move my parentheses. So in this case, I move my parentheses here. And the reason I would do that is because I know 250 is kind of an easy number, right? Because 250 and another 250 is 500 and another 250 is 750 and then another 250. So it's just an easier number to do because four two hundred and fifties is going to give me five. Uh, is going to give me a um, thousand, right? Um, I'm going to kind of do this. So if I did two fifty, so if I doubled two fifty, I know that's five hundred, and then in order to do it by four, I just basically double that again, and that would be a thousand. So that's something I can easily do in my head, as opposed to four times nine, which is sixty three, and then I do sixty three times two hundred and fifty. Just not quite as easy to do in your head, but nine times a thousand is easy. It would be 9,000, all right? Hopefully I didn't confuse you on that. But again, all we're doing with the commutative or the associative property is we are just moving numbers around to do the numbers that are easier to do in our head to make the problem simpler. So more strategies. Choose the strategy that works best with the numbers in the problem. Our examples. Use friendly reminders. So if you multiply 24 times 250, you can think 24, well that equals six times four, and I know that four times 250 is 1,000. So 24 times 250 is the same thing as saying six times four times 250. 
So I can put my six on the outside because that's not an easy number to do. But I knew that my four times 250 was 1,000. And then it's easy to do six times 1,000 because that's 6,000. Another way that you could do mental math is you can use halving and doubling. So for example, if I'm multiplying 16 times, 20, times 50, I can think to myself, well, 16 can be divided evenly by two, and 16 divided by two is eight, so find the and that's finding the half of eight, right? So if I'm going to do that, then I can, multi I can think um, eight times 50, if I'm multiplying that, I look at my eight and my five like I did before. So eight times five is 40, and then I had my zero is 400, so that's really easy. Well, if eight is half of 16, if I double this number, because if I double eight, I get 16, then I should have uh, the answer. And if I double 400, it's 800. So the answer to 16 times 50 is 800. Another way that you can do mental math is you can use addition. So for example, in the problem um, four times 625, I think to myself, well, 625 is 600 plus 25. So if I did four times 625, I could say that it's the same thing as saying four times the 600 plus 25. So I can use distributed property. So that means I would do four times the 600 and four times the 25. So you would write it out like this, four times 600 and four times 25. So four times 25, well, that's like having four quarters. That's a dollar, right? So that's gonna be 100. And then four times 600, well, again, I could do four times six, which is 24. And then I have my two zeros. So I'd get 2,400. Well, that should be pretty easy to add up. 2,400 plus 100 is 2,500. Okay, finally, another way to do mental math, depending on the problem, is to just use subtraction. So for example, if I'm multiplying five times 398, I can think to myself, 398 is just two less than 400, and 400 is an easy number to work with. So if I did five times the 400 minus the two, then I would get the answer. So five times 400 is a pretty easy one to do. Um, and then I would minus that um, by five times two. So five times two is 10 and five times 400 is 2,000, because five times four is 20, and then I have my two zeros. So 2,000 minus the 10 is going to be 1,990. The question asks, what is being used in examples C and D? Well, in examples C and D, we are using the distributive property. So the distributive property is when you're breaking apart the number um, like we did, actually we did that a couple of lessons ago. So hopefully you remember that. But this is just a way to do mental math and that's why we learn the distributive property because you're not always going to wanna pull out your phone or a calculator. Um, sometimes it's just faster to do it in your head as long as you break the numbers apart easily. Okay, share and show. So now we're going to break apart the factor 112 to find seven times 112 by using mental math and addition. So I can think to myself, 100's an easy number to use, right? So if I did, if I took this 100 and I broke it apart and do 100 plus 12, I still get 112, right? But it's much easier to multiply by 100 and to multiply by 12 than it is to multiply by 112, especially in your head. So if I take seven times 112 and I turn it into seven times 100 plus 12, that's gonna help me. So first I'm going to do my seven times the 100 and then I'm going to do, I'm going to add that partial product to 7 times the 12. So first I'm going to do 7 times 100, which is 700, plus, and then 7 times 12, well, I've got 7 times 12 is 84. So now I have 700 plus 84. My answer is 784. So on these next ones, they want you to not only do the problem, but tell which strategy that you used. So did you use the commutative property? Did you use addition? Did you use friendly reminders, halving and doubling, associative property? What did you use? Okay, so for the first one, I'm thinking to myself that I probably wanna do commutative property because I wanna put numbers together that are easy. So I, right now I have four times six times 50, but I know that four times 50 is kind of an easy one to do. 
So if I switch them around, I do commutative property and I do four times 50, I can do that in my head, right? And then I multiply that number times the 60, it's going to be more helpful. Because four times 50 is going to give me 200. And then I just have to do 200 times 60. And two times six is 12. And then I have two zeros, so I'm gonna put those in there. So I have 1,200, or 1,200. And what I used was the commutative property. On the next one, I'm gonna use addition because I think that would be easier. So I'm gonna put use addition. So I'm gonna do five times, and I'm gonna break apart this 400. I'm gonna break it apart to say 400 plus 20. So that means I'm gonna do five times 400, and I'm gonna do five times 20. So five times 400, well five times four is 20, and then I add my two zeros. So I've got 2,000 over here, and then put my little parentheses, sorry. And then I've got five times 20, five times two is 10, plus the one zero is 100. And now I'm gonna add those together, and I'm gonna get 2,100. Finally, on this next one, I think it's gonna be easier to use subtraction because 298 is just two away from 300. So if I did six times 300, and then I minus it six um, times two, right? Because I'm taking the two away. So six times 300, six times three is 18. And I add, put my zeros, and it's gonna be minus six times two, which is 12 and 180, or 1,800 um, minus 12 is gonna be 1,788. And again, on this one, I used the subtraction method. I used the subtraction method. So now what I want you to do, what I want you to do is I want you to do problem, whoops, problems five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10 in your book. Remember, I want you to solve it and tell me what strategy that you used and then you're going to do Think Central. Again, when you get to that part and if you need me, I'm going to be on the carpet. Good luck.